So um, last week uh, we talked about singing our praises of gratitude. Did anybody practice your shofar playing this week? So if you didn't, that's all right. Um, we, we'll, do, we'll, we'll maybe work on that another time. So we talked about having that attitude of gratitude, taking it into our workplace, carrying it into our homes, um, extending it to, for those whom we are in contact with in our daily lives. Today we're going to continue speaking about gratitude and the ways that I believe the Lord God has blessed our ministry here, our community of faith. Um, I'd like for us also to have a, just a mindset of celebrating or acknowledging the faith community that we are and also the community that we are becoming. The song that we just shared, that was Psalm 136, uh, is often referred to as a litany of thanksgiving. And I thought how appropriate we are at this time of thanksgiving. We'll be celebrating this week. I mean, in Hebrew, it is referred to as the great Hallel, uh, and it's often recited as a Jewish prayer. That word Hallel means praise. So a uh, hymn of praise or a litany of praise. Uh, we participated in this. We could call this a choral reading because as Chad, uh, we, we sometimes call that a responsive reading. <clears throat> Chad, you know, gave us the first part of the verse and then we continued with that choral response. For his steadfast love endures forever. Now, I just ask, and you don't have to do a show of hands, but I hope that phrase about for his steadfast love and goods forever rings uh, and something, you know, some thoughts in your mind because we have talked about that previously. Uh, we talked, in fact, we, we, as we were talking about gratitude last week, we were studying Psalm 105. The last verse in that psalm, it read, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So we've spoken about God's unfailing love on a number of occasions, um, and I've referred to the Hebrew word hesed. Remember, we've spoken about hesed, and it describes God's love as an action. It's his constant love, his love that never fails. When we look a little deeper uh, at our scripture for today, we see this Thanksgiving litany or this prayer. I believe it's divided into uh, what I believe is four sections. And if you want to follow along with your paper, you can. But the first part, those verses 1 through 3, is kind of set apart from the rest of it. And I believe this is set apart to acknowledge and praise the Lord God. I'm listening to another translation, and this is called the Easy to Read Version. I really like that name, the Easy to Read Version. And I just want to read a few little, uh, the first three verses. Praise the Lord because he is good. His faithful love will last forever. Praise the God of God's. His faithful love will last forever. Praise the Lord of Lords. His faithful love will last forever. So those first three verses are uh, in praise to God, giving him honor and glory, uh, uh, lifting him up. So we could call that part, I would say, like a hymn of praise to God. As we continue the next section, verses 5 through 9, it acknowledges the wonder of creation. Did you hear it talked about uh, creating the heavens? the earth above the waters, and the sun and the moon. The next section after that, um, this is verses 10 through 15, it lifts up the many miracles and wonders uh, that the God of gods performed from the last plague in Egypt, uh, when the firstborn were struck down, bringing the people out of Israel, uh, using his strong and mighty hand and outstretched arms uh, through Moses to what? Part the Red Sea, to bring the Israelites through that. And then, of course, uh, Pharaoh and his army were swept into the sea. The next part uh, is uh, verses 16 through 22. And here we see God's faithfulness uh, in being with the people, uh, the Hebrew people, in the wilderness, uh, going through the battles, and then, of course, delivering to them to their promised land or their promised inheritance. Now remember that part took 40 years because they weren't always obedient to God's will, plan, and purpose, and they created that barrier. So sometimes, you know, they, then they would have to repent and they would get right with God again. But anyway, what should have taken them probably, what, maybe about eight days took 40 years. Well, uh, heaven forbid that it should take us that long to listen. So let's, let's, uh, Let's listen, and I want to be obedient. I don't want to take it 40 years for me to have to learn some, learn a lesson. Now, uh, as this great halal that we're speaking of, or this litany of uh, thanksgiving concludes, then we are reminded again of the Lord of Lords, 
of his uh, love, mercy, and compassion. In verse 23, it says, uh, he remembered us in our low estate, and uh, then it continues, he freed us from our enemies, and he gives food to every creature. And it, then it concludes with a command of thanks. It says, 26, give thanks to the God of heaven. And of course, we have that continued uh, refrain for his uh, mercy, or his love uh, endures forever. Now, um, so we're speaking of God's unfailing love, that hesed. So just to recap, we began with praise, and then we had several sections that were remembering. Remember, uh, we, and we've been talking about the Exodus, the Genesis and Exodus story for some weeks. So we had the praise of God. We had a remembering section uh, and, uh, about God's faithfulness, and then it cl concluded with uh, praise and thanksgiving. That was our psalm for today. That's Psalm 136. So in remembering all that God has done, the psalmist looked beyond times for, of difficulty. Like I said, it wasn't all um, roses and sunshine, was it? We've talked about some of, over the past number of weeks, some of the situations they, they went through. The goodness of God, though, however, his hesed, his steadfast love, enabled the psalmist to look beyond those uh, difficulties and to focus on the blessings not on the times that might have been burdensome. If we're speaking realistically, though, sometimes we go through difficult situations. We know that's going to happen. We're human. We have that human uh, nature. Uh, remember, we talked about that and traced that all the way back to uh, Adam and Eve, that human, uh, we, God gives us that free will. We make poor choices sometimes. Sometimes things happen, though, just because they happen. But through trials and through struggles, uh, we can still have confidence in knowing that God is with us. There may be times when we don't feel like uh, we, we are experiencing that constant love, that his love will endure forever. Well, why is that? Uh, we have to remember that it's not because he is not there, but why? We talked about this prior as well. Sometimes we set barriers. Without maybe some of the things that we do. I'll put those barriers between us and God. It's not that he has removed himself from us. It's that we have maybe uh, done something to distance ourselves. So is there a barrier that separates us from God? Is it a time that maybe God is trying to draw us closer to him by, uh, you know, something is happening, but he wants our dependence on him. So maybe that could be the case. Or... We have to, I think, speak about this too. Maybe it's the evil one that's preying on us, and maybe that's what's causing that distance. So uh, during my devotion time this week, I penned some thoughts about adversity, and I shared that. I think I shared it, uh, and maybe in an email out. Uh, if you're not getting my emails, definitely uh, let me know, though, because we're trying to reconcile email addresses. So um, I'd like to share just a few things from that um, that I penned this week. We all face adversity in our lives. What we have to remember as a people of faith is that Christ, too, of course, he faced evil, adversity, and suffering through temptation, ridicule, sadness, betrayal, grief, and, of course, physical suffering. Uh, however, we know that he won the uh, victory over sin and death through his death and resurrection. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for us on the hard road of the cross at Calvary. What we have to do is believe and receive that. We believe that he died for our sins. He paid that sin debt. And then we receive that precious gift. Believe and receive. Whatever adversity we're facing, we don't have to face it alone. If there is that barrier between us and God, we can remove that barrier. How? We repent of our wrongdoing. We ask God to forgive us. And guess what? He already forgave us. As far as the east is from the west, the, the, the scripture tells us that he forgave us when Christ paid that sin debt for us on the cross of Calvary. The apostle Peter tells us in the sacred scripture, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Sometimes people will say, well, God doesn't put more on you than you can handle. Well, that is uh, misleading because it's not about God putting us, putting things on us. God wants us, our dependence on him. It's about God, uh, we may have things putting on us, but it's about us trusting in him. It's about us having faith and giving him our burdens to handle for us. I just said, 
Peter tells us, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He doesn't intend for us to handle those things. He wants us to give them to him to handle. Now, not to minimize anything that any of you are enduring or may have endured or anything that we might endure in the future, but whatever our circumstances, we have to look beyond them. Now, honestly, I know when you're in the middle, it's difficult. But just this week, I had a number of deadlines. I had some uh, situations, a couple of things that were dependent on other people. I had no control of what other people were doing. I could only control what I was doing. It would have been very easy, though, for me to let doubt, fear, worry uh, to take over those situations. But I had to be real mindful. I don't know if this, maybe I'm the only one this happens. I had to be mindful, though. I had to do, I call it the self-talk. Uh, I had to look beyond those deadlines that were coming up, and I had to know that God would be with me. I knew that after Thursday, the sun was still going to come up the next day, and, and things would be all right. Maybe, depending on, I might have uh, gotten what I needed to get done, or whatever, and I did meet my deadlines. Maybe not quite how I would have wanted to, but you know what? That's all right. Uh, if, if there are, are after effects, I'll, I'll work through those. But I did work through it, but I had to, like I said, I had to kind of do some self-talk. I had to focus and chew a little bit of what I was doing at a time, knowing that whatever happened, God, of course, would be with me and that I would get beyond that situation. But I had to sort of think through it. Otherwise, it was going to be real easy. I think sometimes when we are feeling weak, uh, vulnerable, that's when I think the evil one starts whispering that doubt and fear uh, into our minds. So we have to be mindful about that. So I was thinking... How easy it is for us to be overcome with anxiety due to circumstances that are beyond our control or even influences of the world. So what I realized is that we have to trust the Lord God more than we trust the influences of the Lord of the world. We have, or we have to trust God more than we allow the influences of the world to, to affect us. Now, in a, there's a song called Greater is He That Is In Me. Uh, that is, than he that is in the world. And, and that, uh, that verse that, of that song, <coughs> greater is the Lord God that is in me than the evil one that is in the world. God is greater in me than the evil one. So <coughs> therefore, I have to trust in God and not be influenced by the world. This past week, uh, we had our charge conference that Chad mentioned. Uh, Reverend Joy was with us. He came and led our conference. And it was a time for us to remember the past. Wayne did a great job. He asked for a laity report from the Barnwell uh, congregation, and Wayne got up and spoke uh, and did a beautiful. It was um, he was it, it, it was a spur of the moment. But Wayne, thank you for that, and just from speaking from your heart, and he did a great job representing you all. Um, so it was a time for us to remember, but also a time to start thinking ahead. Um, we looked back over the last year, and then also we talked about, um, we did lift up, as we did on All Saints Sunday, those who have gone before us, and so that was a special moment as well. For me, one of my tasks for that uh, charge conference is I had to create something called State of the Charge. And I enjoyed reflecting on looking back uh, about how God, how I believe God has been with us during the last year. And without reading it word for word, and I will share that with you, I'll send that out. But I wanted to just share a few thoughts from that. Um, and I would like, I will say that this may not be inclusive of everything, every ministry, every opportunity that we're doing, but it was just what came to my mind as I was reflecting. Uh, they were my thoughts, and like I said, I reflected on the goodness of the Lord God and His faithfulness, I believe, to our charge, to our churches, particularly over the last year when we did go through some translation. So while uh, Hampton Barnwell Charge, while we have experienced a time of transition during the last year, I believe we've been reminded of God's faithfulness to us as a charge, as churches, and as children of God. I believe we've also begun to breathe new life. I hope you feel this way too. We've begun to breathe new life back in the ministries and programs. We have strong uh, and faithful Bible study groups and clubs that include um, Companions in Christ Bible study. We have the nighttime Bible study that a number of uh, folks from here are participating. We have the ladies coffee club, club uh, the ladies club, the men's club uh, that, that I spoke about will meet Monday night. Uh, we've had folks from here that participate in that. 
Uh, and as well as just getting the fellowship of need, we've been doing for the past, I guess it's gone on about three years, we've been studying men of the Bible. That's been very rewarding as well. We have our young at heart that this church is so integral in, in seeing that happen by allowing our facility to use. Paula is the uh, co-leader or co-chair of that and, and helps work through that. So I, it's just been, it was nice to, like I said, reflect. Reflect on, on uh, the programs and things that are happening, and I'm proud that I see membership of both congregations participating together. And truly, I think I've said this before, but what I believe, or at least this is my mindset, I, I hope that maybe you all feel the same way. I believe we have one ministry, the Hampton Bramble United Methodist Charge, but we have two campuses. It doesn't mean that each church doesn't have our own identity. But I, what a joy it is to be able to, to fellowship and to participate in the ministries um, and, and support one another, I believe. I've already told you all before, Wayne's our box minister for the food distribution, and I absolutely cannot do it without him. So I'm so grateful for that. And so many, I could go around the room and speak about all of you. So, but as we move into the new year, uh, plans are being made for visioning conversations at both churches. Um, I'm excited about a spring-wide confirmation class that will uh, affect both, um, some youth from both uh, churches, uh, and as well as thinking about other ways to support our, our children and youth. Um, and among other things, those are just a few. So like I said, I'll send the rest of that state of the charge out. But um, this week, as we give thanks for our many blessings, I've got some homework for you. Today, we had a lot of trees. Uh, you should have gotten a couple of handouts. Um, I hope that you might consider taking time looking back on your life and whether you do it on the little paper that I gave you or maybe in your Bible journal or just on a piece of paper or you know a sticky note. I hope you'll have some time to reflect back on your life and remember how the Lord God has been faithful to you and your family. And I created that template based off of the Psalm 136 that we did today that you can say, I remember, so I'll just, I remember, I'll, I'll just use myself as an example. I remember when God was with Mary and I, when we cared for her mother in our home for three and a half years, his steadfast love endures forever. And then I would say another, you know, I remember when God was with us last year when my mother was uh, sick and I had the beautiful opportunity to be there with her, with God, with us when she passed away. His love endures forever. So if you have time to look back um, on your life and reflect, that's just for, so for your benefit. I hope that might be something that you would do and would be helpful to you. Um, just like Psalm 136 has truths that point elsewhere in the Bible, um, you may want to create your own prayer of thanksgiving that points back to the truths in your life where God was with you. Um, I'm speaking about situations that happened in our life when we trusted the Lord God with the situation with our whole heart. We gave it to him, like we said earlier. God wants us to put those uh, burdens or those anxieties on him and to share our joys as well. So what we're talking about today is that uh, God's, that relationship that we have with God is about having the knowledge, but about giving him our heart as well. We're remembering how God was with us in the past, how we trusted him in situations with our whole heart, and how we can use those times, I believe, as a stepping stone or a foundation to the future, knowing that God will continue to be with us. If we are be obedient to his will, plan, and purpose for our life, if we have not created that barrier between us and God, he will be with us. Just as he was with Jesus on the cross at Calvary, just like he was with us during this last year. So in addition to reflecting on God's faithfulness in your life, I would invite you to think about our church here at Marbury United Methodist Church and about our charge. As you look back on the past, what are you thankful for about our ministries, about our charge, about our church? Reflect on your ideas and your past experiences, and I want you to think about the future. As we utilize what God has given us through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Are there programs, are there evangelism ideas, are there ways that we can reach out to those beyond these walls, uh, are there mission ideas that you believe God would have us implement to help us better love one another and love these, those beyond the walls of our church? And I'm not talking about creating things like to do busy work or whatever, just to do something just for the sake of doing it. But 
as you think about your experiences here at Marble Church, but also maybe in your uh, when you were younger or when you have been uh, affiliated affiliated maybe with other churches, are there ministries or things that you that really just uh, impressed you or that not, not, I'm not really sure impresses the made an impact on you, and you think oh maybe God is calling us to do that? Then I would like for us to have those conversations. And so if you were willing to create that, that, I've given you another little sheet there that you might record your thoughts. And I thought next week as we conclude our, we've been doing our, our stewardship focus for the last, next week will be three weeks. And as we cl conclude our series on gratitude and blessings, if you're willing, I would invite you to bring that sheet with us and let's place it on, on the altar and ask the Lord to bless and open up those stores of opportunity for us to serve if it is according to his will. Uh, and then if, if there are those that, um, I'll, I'll send this out electronically. If you'd rather steal it out and electronically, then that, you could do that as well. So uh, this week, I hope you will leave place uh, in anticipating um, uh, as you work through the week that there may be space for you to say thank you to God and thank you to one another, thank you to your family. And let's not forget, of course, as we go through this thing that we call life, to share our hardships, share our joys, share those sorrows. And when I talked earlier, I believe that's how we learn from one another. Uh, and we can share the burden with one another's burdens as well as giving those to God. Um, I believe this is how we grow, by uh, sharing our faith stories. We sang earlier, give thanks to a grateful heart. And so if we are boasting about anything, may we boast about our blessings because of what the Lord has done for us. In Matthew 5, 16, Jesus says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So may what we do bring honor and glory to God. In the next month, we, we will sing Joy to the World, acknowledging the birth of, Christ, of the Christ child, God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, if we look at that hymn, I believe it's a, a second or third verse, and it may be on 246. If you'd like to look, you can. If not, I'm going to speak it. Uh, this is that verse. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. So friends, what we are speaking about is the blessings, and let's not forget about the Lord of Lords, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and that he is still on the throne. And uh, we have to trust in the wonders of his love more than we trust in the influences of the world. Today I offer these words in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.